All right, welcome in everybody to Tennessee at Alabama History Action. What a game! Uh, they, uh, they they got us in the first half, but thank God it's a sixty minute game, and those guys didn't give up. They come out and played the second half uh, like a totally different team. Can't wait to talk about that, Jake. What an incredible, incredible second half performance from this Alabama football team. You know, trailing twenty to seven uh, at the, what was it? Was it twenty to seven or twenty? Yeah, twenty to seven at the half. Mm -hmm. and coming out and just totally dominating Tennessee in the second half to get that 34-20 to 20 win over the Volunteers on the third Saturday in October. Uh, if you're in the chat, please, please let us know your thoughts and comments on the game. We're going to put some polls up throughout the, uh, the throughout the evening on the, on the live chat. So right now we got one up, the game MVP, Milro McClellan, Deontay Lawson, or Jihad Campbell. Feel free to give us your answer if it's somebody else as well. But Jake, I, I just it was a tale of two halves as as Avery Johnson, the former Alabama mm. men's basketball coach, famously coined. Uh what a performance in the second half, Jake. I, I don't know what was said at halftime. I don't know what message was sent. I don't know what adjustments were made, but my goodness, did they work? Absolutely, man. And I have said all year this team is a second half team, and they show that today. I mean, I mean, the offense couldn't get out of its own way in the first half. And then the second half, it's just something just clicked, and they started moving the ball, running the ball. Uh, the game plan was different. We saw Miro have a couple of, like, QB uh, powers and really opened up this offense, and they started rolling, and they they got 24 unanswered points, you know. Or, you know so, I mean, it was incredible. Well, what a display in the second half from this team, and defensively as well. I mean, Tennessee was able to move the ball a little bit, but when it got to crunch time, they, they did get, you know, a couple of times in the red zone, but we we hunkered down and and stopped them. And kind of some boneheaded plays. I, I don't know why you go for it on fourth and one on, on the other side. You know, Lane Kiffin's done that against us. I really didn't think Hopper was going to do it, but he did. And Alabama is really good at stopping, you know, fourth and one plays this year. You know, they, they've done it all season, it seems like. So Well, it, it surprised me that he went for the, on those fourth downs, considering how well Alabama was defending the run. I mean, if you go to Tennessee stats, Jake, the only success they had on the ground was with, with Milton on design runs that I'm sure Alabama didn't really prepare for because that hasn't been part of their offense this season. So, right. uh, you know, if you look at the, the bot score for Tennessee and their rushing yardage, um, you know, that, that they didn't really get much. Uh, 27 unanswered points for Alabama in the second half. Unbelievable. Just a, it was literally a tale of two halves. I mean, look there. Sam, yeah. Samson had 28, Small had 24, and Wright had 22. I mean, that that is a good – that's a good day right there for the Alabama defense. And and I thought in the second half, Jake, uh, Tommy Reese was in his bag. Yeah. He, he really had a good feel for that game in the second half. It's like – they they were they couldn't find the rhythm in the first half for whatever reason, but in the second half they made those adjustments and he he called a great game in the second half and you know it led to the win Jake the offense scores in two plays to start this excuse me the second half and uh, you know from then on it just felt like Alabama was in complete control. Yeah, it is you know we got all the momentum and then it just showed you know that stadium got got riled up. Saving one of the fans to be loud. I felt like they were loud pretty much all game. First half, uh, you know, there was kind of some some silent moments because we weren't really doing much. But man, that second half, everything was electric down there. And uh, man, that that team come alive. Jason McClellan there had um, 115 yards. I mean, that might be one of his best performances this year. Excuse me, having uh, 115 yards on the ground. And I don't know where he was at in the first half, but he, I mean, he couldn't get anything going in the first half. So all that damage pretty much happened in the second half. Yeah, he had, he had 36 rushing yards at halftime. So, you know, 75% of his of his work come in the second half. And, uh, you know, Milrow did a good job of kind of distributing the ball today. You know, see four catch or three catches for 77 yards for Bond, mm -hmm. four for 62 for Burton. Law had a couple catches. I thought I thought the the little jet sweep to to uh, to Kendrick Law was a nice addition to the offense, something we hadn't seen all season long. And, and Law is a playmaker with a ball in his hand, so that was nice to see. Um, so I, I thought it was – the second half was just obviously completely different than the first half. And I thought, you know, even though Tennessee had 20 first-half points, the defense for Alabama kept them in the game. I mean, they, they mm -hmm. hit, Tennessee could have easily been up 28 to, no, 28 to 7 at half. Very yeah. easily could have been up 28 to 7 at half. And you're probably looking at a completely different game. 
Instead, Alabama gets a bunch of stops in the red zone defensively in the first half, and it's 20 to 7. And, and even though Tennessee scores there late in the first half, you know, Alabama gets the ball to start the second half, and you feel like if they can score there, then it's anybody's game. And they were able to score in two plays. And then from then on out, the, the defense was just was dominant in the second half. I, I wish we had a we wish we had a breakdown of the stats half to half because yeah. uh defensively it was a clinic in the second half. And, and and a guy who who played the game of his life was Jihad Campbell. Jake, mm-hmm. he, he come up big on, on, on run plays. Uh, he made a big-time tackle on the tight end in open field to prevent a first-down pickup for Tennessee, which was big. Of course, he gets the scoop and score for a touchdown to kind of blow open the game, and that kind of put the nail in the coffin for Alabama. So just, uh, just a big-time performance. At inside linebacker, Lawson and Campbell are as good as any duo in the country. Yeah, I agree, man. I, I feel like, you know, they had their best games, uh, you know, th- this season in this game. And, man, they, you know, they showed up. Uh, Campbell got in on a big fourth and one. I think it was like they was – it was on our side of the ball. They went for it on fourth and one, like I mentioned earlier. And he come up with a big stop, uh, got the ball back, and that pretty much gave all the momentum to Alabama at that point. And we never looked back. I mean, the, the whole defense, I felt like, kind of started out slow uh, on the defensive front. Uh, we weren't really getting a lot of pressure. But but late in that game, man, Dallas Turner and uh, uh, Braswell started, you know, <laughs> enforcing their will. A boy be uh, too, man. A boy be was, yeah. was a monster. Yeah. I, and, and I I want to give going back to the first half. This this sounds uh, blasphemous coming from an Alabama fan, but I want to give Tennessee credit to start that game the way they come out and, and mm-hmm. just really punched Alabama in that mouth and and Joe Milton come out look, looking like Joe Montana. I mean, yeah. he was dropping down that that pass to to Squirrel for their first touchdown was a good as throw and catch as you're ever going to see. Yep. And and for some reason, Chris Braswell was in coverage. Uh, our 260 pound outside linebacker was covering their 5'10", <laughs> 180 pound receiver. But uh, yeah. that's neither here nor there. But the the adjustments were made by, by Alabama, obviously in the second half, because it was a totally different effort on both sides of the football. And 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 offensively, what changed the game was the ability to run the football. When you can get downhill, get four or five yards a, a carry on the ground in the running game, it, it just totally opens up the playbook. Uh, also, design runs for Milrow, they were there. You take away the sack yardage he had today. He had a good get game on the ground. I know he didn't only had three yards rushing, but, you know, you see there he had a he had a, a long of, of 15. Uh, mm-hmm. So he had some nice carries in the game, and, and a lot of those were design runs. And he took a couple sacks, four sacks. If you take away those four sacks – he has a lot more rushing yardage in the game, so uh, I just I just thought in the second half, Tommy Reese did a much better job of of calling the plays, and obviously the players executed them in the second half as well. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. The the second half play calling was, was amazing, and I really felt like you know collectively the whole offensive line played a lot better today than what they have previously. Uh, I know, I think. You know, one guy got free on it might have been a busted you know call on on the on the line, uh, and and got Miller for a sack. But other than that, he pretty much had a, a, a really nice pocket today, and uh, he was able to to take advantage of that in the second half. And uh, you know that that bomb to to Bond on that second play of of this you know this third quarter man that that was a beauty. Bond, I mean he got he got free, and I don't see. He may be our fastest guy on the team. I don't see how you let him him free in the in the backfield like that in the secondary because you know he's got the Jets and and he beat them, burn them bad. So that that was great to see. Yeah, the safety bid on a on a, a crossing route and st- he thought he thought Bond was going to run a crosser and instead Bond just runs right by him. It was probably an option route if I had to guess. It's see what if the safety is sinking his hips or if he's coming downhill. So. Um, really good job uh, by Bond and Milro on that connection. They've got a great connection on the deep ball. I just put up another poll in the chat. What was the play of the game? Was mm-hmm. it Milro to Bond to start the second half? Was it the scoop and score from Campbell or something else? Right now, uh, the scoop and score from Campbell is running away with it with seven votes. Uh, yeah. Also, I want to get to the chat because we, we hadn't got there yet. I uh, wonder if they played Riley. Oh, I, I just lost it. The, oh. the, there you go. Uh, one that they played the Riley Green, uh, I think it's supposed to be beat the hell out of Tennessee song. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, man, and Ben Ross said, Give the defense the game ball today. I agree 100%. That defense, like you mentioned, Stacy, was was on from from the start. They kept us in, in the game, and uh, it could have easily 
snowballed real quick. Uh, but they they calmed down and uh, and they didn't let any any big you know momentum plays happen in that second half. And uh, and we the offense finally got going, and you see the final result right there, thirty four to twenty. Yeah. So Jake, what do you think? What do you think was the the what changed the game? I mean, what what play do you think changed the game? Uh, I, I mean, honestly, I think it's a tie between the the uh, Miro Devon that really got got things opened up, uh, and then I feel like the the scoop and score from from Campbell just got the got the fans more energized and and the team just rallied behind that, and uh, I really think those are the two big uh, game changers of the, of the game. Yeah, and I, I want to point to another play that that's so crazy. When Tennessee, one guy called fair catch and the other oh, guy yeah. called it, that really – like that was – that happened right after the Bond touchdown, and it really mm-hmm. set them up in bad field position and had Alabama's defense kind of – they they were feeling it at that moment. They were able to get a stop. And, 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 and so they get a score to start the second half and then a stop on defense, and that really set the tone for the rest of the second half of what that game was going to look like. So uh, I, I look back at that play as well. Uh, one one disappointing aspect of this game, Jake, is Kool Aid McKinstry as the punt returner. He let <laughs> he let two hit the ground that he should not have hit the ground, Jake. And the one late in the fourth quarter, it, I mean that that's a potentially game changing play mm-hmm. because if if yeah. you know it backs Alabama up, if Tennessee gets the ball there in good field position and gets a touchdown, you know you're looking at a score that's thirty four to twenty seven, and it's anybody's game again. So you cannot allow those type of things. I think if he would have fielded the ball, it would have been uh, at the 30-yard line. So just uh, they, – Kool-Aid cannot let that happen. He has to field the ball or get somebody back there that's going to field it. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. Two two things I want to bring up. We mentioned about the rushing yardage that, that we only allowed 133. That was the tone for the game. We talked about that on our pregame show, how if you slow down this rushing attack, for Tennessee, uh, you have a great chance of winning this game. They did that. The other thing is right there at the bottom, the penalties. One penalty for this Alabama team today. And I know they was at home, so, you know, that that might have a little bit of effect on it. But just do not get in your own way, especially offensively, especially when we're still trying to figure things out. And and I know people are saying, my God, we're we're seven games into the season when we should have had it figured out by now. But we're still we're still learning, and I think Reese is still trying to learn. Milro, Milro is still trying to learn how to be that leader and and just try to get everybody else on you know on the same page. But one one penalty is great for a whole game. No of doubt, no doubt uh, the, that 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 is a big factor in this game, Jake. Just the one penalty. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was a. False start, maybe. I'm not even. I don't even think it was. Uh, Might have been awesome. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember what the penalty was, to be honest no, with you. I don't either. Um, but uh, yeah, g- great, great discipline in this game. To me, the only, you know, the 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 fumble by Milrell. You got to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker. He had on the ball a little bit too long on the fumble. The interception. Yeah. Uh, that that to me that was on Burton. He should have got both hands up. And mm-hmm. at worst, you know, two things happen. Either he catches it, or the ball hits the ground if he gets both hands up. So. Um, yep. you know, that, that, that was on Burton. It was kind of a bad luck play for Milro. He couldn't even, he didn't even realize what happened on the play, to be honest with you. But, yep. um, and, and yeah, like Ben Ross says, no drive killers from penalties was, is always a good thing. And it, yes. uh, yeah, that, that's right. It was a false start after the back to back off sides and Saban God. lost it on the sidelines. <laughs> he yeah. got it. I mean, they were just giving us free yardage and then we just have a bonehead to play there. And, um, yep. another thing is, you know, Seth's there there in the second half started having some bad snaps again. You know, he's kind of cleaned it up. The first half, I don't think he had he had any, but the second half, I don't that, that that is so strange to me because Seth last year was on the dot with was snapping the ball to to Bryce. I don't know if, if the difference in height has changed. I don't know. But but you know, I, I hope we still get that cleaned up here uh, moving forward. <laughs> Alabama football says, What did Saban say to the team during halftime? I sure wish I knew. Yeah, me too. But you know, he went he on the Alabama radio broadcast. He told them. He told. Uh, I guess it's Christian Miller on the sideline. He said. Uh, he said, you know, we, we just got to stay positive. It's just a two score game. A lot of football left. We got We got to go in there and and create some positive energy in the locker room. And I guess that worked. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and and I know that there was a couple guys open that I thought uh, Milro yeah. got a first down there. But, I mean, Burton made an incredible catch, though, there. So, you know, hats off to him for making that. You know, last year he had a lot of drops, unnecessary drops. This year, if it besides the one in the first half, you know, if it's in his vicinity, he's catching it. Mm-hmm. You know, and and on bond, on the touchdown pass to Bond, Milro made a subtle play within the pocket that he has not done all season long. He took a couple hitch step forward and 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 stepped up in the pocket where he could have enough room to make the throw. Yep, and and just. Just incredible. I mean, it's just – what a second half. I can't I, – I, it's unbelievable how much different they looked in the second half, Jake. Uh, I mean, no joke, in the first half, they looked like they couldn't win the Birmingham Bowl. I know. And then in the second half, they looked like one of the best teams in the country. Do- yeah. Dominating, suffocating defense in a physical ground game with a vertical, vertical passing game to complement it. And yep. it, it's just puzzling. It really is. It is, and, and I understand the frustration from, from people. You know, I, I'm with y'all. I want to see a full four quarters from this team. We've yet to have it yet. But, you know, a lot of people was was doubting because we was down 27 at halftime. Never give up on, on the GOAT. I mean, we, we yeah. know Nick Saban is going to make the, the necessary changes. And, and you see, I mean, we dominated the second half. I feel like that's how this season is going to go. And I've said this time and time again on, on our show and on this one as well. We weather the storm the first half, and then the second half we completely dominate the game, and and it's been true today. Well, here's my, you know, we're getting close to to wrapping up the show, but Jake, what worries me though is when you play LSU and mm-hmm. Jaden Daniels, you better not fall behind too quickly because that yeah. offense can score. They can. Quick. And if you don't think Daniels and, and LSU is going to put up some points against Alabama then you're crazy because they have two dynamic playmakers at receiver and arguably the best quarterback in the country. Now their yep. defense is suspect at best, but so is our offense. I mean, if we're, if we're, <laughs> if we're calling a spade a spade, yep. it's a, it's been a Jekyll and Hyde season for this album offense. So depending on what, which offense shows up is going to depend on what happens in that game, but you can't fall behind too much too early against LSU because that, that offense and Jaden Daniels is rolling. And when they get to clicking, uh, they're incredibly tough to stop. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. LG20, yeah, you know, except Arkansas. Yeah, you're right. The first half was a complete domination. It was like a flip of the script there. Mm-hmm. We, we dominated the first half. Second half, I don't know what happened. Uh, but, you know, if they could put all four quarters together, I, nobody's beating this team in the country, I, I don't feel it, like. Jake, if, 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 if they can play like they did in the second half of this game for sure. four quarters – I mean, because that that because what the way Alabama plays, it, it was such a complimentary football, Jake. Mm-hmm. Like I mentioned, the offense was able to to use the clock with with a solid rushing attack while also throwing the ball and making plays down the field through the air, and the defense just stuffed the run and 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 put it all on the quarterback's shoulders. And when they do that, they're able to pin their ears back and get after him, force turnovers, uh, you know, get some sacks. I don't think they had any first half sacks. They finished the game with four sacks plus a, a sack fumble that's picked up for a touchdown. So just consistency in performance, Jake, is, is mm-hmm. what this team needs. Because if they put it together for four quarters, they they are going to be tough to beat by anybody. Yeah, absolutely, Stacey. I, I agree 100%. Uh, somebody said in the chat earlier, I forgot who it was, but uh, they was talking about the game in two weeks. Uh, you know, Jaden Daniels, somebody, they said that we got to learn how to stop, you know, QB runs. I feel mm-hmm. like that's part of his game. And like you said earlier, Stacey, Milton hasn't really shown that no. this year. So we really didn't pre- prepare for it. I feel like we're going to prepare for that because Daniel is, is that's part of his arsenal. He can run the ball and throw it real well. Well, and, and you know, a big portion of, of Milton's yardage on the ground come late in the game when Alabama was kind of saying, hey, if you want to do that, you can do that. Right. I mm-hmm. think he had two long runs there late in the game that, that added to his rushing total that, you know, we Alabama more or less just gave to them. Yeah, they were much. they were conceding those plays. <laughs> but yeah, they're going to prepare for Jaden Daniels to run. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Alabama football said, "Why did Tennessee go for so many fourth downs?" I don't know. That's a mystery. I, I mean, I you know last year I, I said when 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 Ole Miss was doing it, I felt like Lane Kiffin felt like he needed touchdowns to beat Alabama instead of field goals. That's why he did all the time. 
But the way this Alabama offense is slow to start, I mean, you just punt that ball away and force them to drive the field, you know, in this game. And, and you know, we just got – we got handed, you know, a couple well, of good, I, good plays there. So. Well, the, the, the one we the, – we, their defense bailed them out with the interception, though, Jake. If you yeah, remember, that's true. yeah. So that's on true. the first one, we didn't even get anything off of it. Yep. So it did, it didn't really cost them, which it, which was honestly really fortunate for them because it was a it was going to be an easy three points for Alabama. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I, I'm with you. You you just can't do those type things. To me, yeah. when you when you're going forward on fourth and one on in, inside the opponent's territory. In a game that's still wide open, um, to me, that's saying I I don't believe we can win unless we have a lot of stuff like this go our way, right. and I, I just think that sends a bad message. Yeah, I agree, Stacy. You know, I just I I think it, they just get into their heads about trying to beat Alabama, and and it just gets to them, and you know, it did today for sure. Yeah, what what a game though, unbelievable. <laughs> I just cannot believe that the second half performance was it twenty. 20- 27 to, no, 20, 27 to nothing in the second half. Yeah, that's it. 27 to nothing. I said 24 to nothing. It was 27 to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. That's against, against a good football team. Yeah. I mean, they only had one loss in this season so far. Yeah. I mean, it just, and, and kudos to the crowd in Bryant Denny Stadium, especially in the second half. They come alive and they, they made an impact on the game. And mm-hmm. uh, just, we say it every week. I feel like on these instant reaction shows, Jake. If this team can just get a little bit better each and every week, a little mm-hmm. more consistent each and every week, they're a really good football team. They got a lot of potential, Jake. They really do. Yeah, I agree. If they can get out of their own way, you know, offensively and just do the things that that they know they can do, this team is is going to be tough to stop. And uh, in two weeks, we're going to need that same crowd back because LSU is mm-hmm. going to another tough one. But the revenge tour so far is one and zero. So uh, let, let's go get let's go get ten, uh, LSU in a few weeks. No doubt about. It. Looking forward to a bye week. Uh, you yeah. know, hey, and by the way, speak. The, the, what made me think of this was the bye week because players need to get healthy and all this stuff. Kudos to Jaden Roberts. Oh man, you know, man, he had that leg wrapped up. I mean, he had he had about six inches of, of wrap yeah. around his leg. <laughs> Yeah, and he kept playing, and he 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 was a warrior in the second half for Alabama, and you know J.C. Latham just completely stoned Pierce, mm-hmm. which is yep. you know I talked about in the pregame show. He, he he's not quite there yet physically yet, and, and J.C. Latham just bodied him the whole game. Yeah, that that was a matchup to watch. I was actually surprised they didn't try to move him over to Caden Proctor's side, but um, but they man, did a couple Latham, times. But Proctor did a good yeah. job. Proctor he did. did a good job. Yeah, and, I uh, think Proctor played his best game. Now, now yeah. in this late, I guess it was in the fourth quarter when we had to kick our last field goal, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, when Milrow got sacked. Well, mm-hmm. You know, and, and Proctor just completely didn't even block the dude come, blitzing off yeah. the edge. That's just a blown assignment. Yeah. Uh, that's stuff he's got to get better at. But I, I thought he he played well. Mm-hmm. I agree, and I, I feel like you know this is his best game, and uh, it's it's what. I think can continue for this offensive line. Just improve, like you say, like you said, Stacey, each and every week. And this offense is get more consistency. And I feel like they can do it because, you know, Saban is going going to, you know, choose some butts at halftime, and the the adjustments are going to be made at mm-hmm. halftime. And this team is going to be fine the second half. But if we put a first half together like we did the second half today and, and play all four quarters, I, like I said, I don't think anybody's going to beat us. I agree 100%. All right, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Bleacher Report app. Been a lot of fun. Thanks to Bleacher Report for having us. Uh, If you want to check more content from us, you can head over to our YouTube channel, Tide Talk Live, where we have constant content on the Crimson Tide. Been a lot of fun. Great win for Alabama over uh, rival Tennessee, 34-20, to with an exciting second half where they just completely dominated the Volunteers, 27 to nothing in the final 30 minutes, but had a lot of fun. Can't wait to see y'all again real soon until next time, everybody roll tide, roll tide.